is public transit to folks living here in Jackson? Very important uh, for a lot of our riders. Um, I would say probably 90% of our riders uh, use public transit because that's their only means of transportation. Um, that's not to say that it's only for those types of riders. Um, we would love to get what is referred to in the industry as the choice riders. And those are the people who have cars parked in their driveway, but it's not too far from a bus stop and um, they can catch the bus to anywhere they need to go in the city of Jackson as opposed to hopping in their car. Basically, Route 4 Bell Hay with Mr. Gibbs. How have the numbers changed? Either have they gone up or gone down over the last five years? Um, there, there has been a decrease um, in the rights over the last five years. And a lot of it was due to the uh, equipment that we had here. Um, I must honestly say we did have some outdated uh, vehicles and uh, they were having major problems, breakdowns, things of that nature, air conditioning, wheelchair lifts. And when you have that, unfortunately, people find other means of transportation. And when they do that, a lot of times they don't come back <laughs> to the public transit. So, yeah, over those five year period, uh, our rights has decreased. 2006, they brought, uh, the city bought 12 vehicles, 12 uh, what are called large fixed route vehicles. Those are Gillick buses. 2009, they bought five handy lift vehicles, um, which are which cater to our ADA community. And then just this last year, uh, 2000, uh, actually 2000, these are 2010, they bought 13 uh, new um, El Dorado Easy Riders. Back in 2008, this, uh, the ADA community did uh, file a lawsuit against the city for some ADA compliance issues. Um, and that was the time when the they had the buses, they were operating the buses with inadequate wheelchair lifts. Um, there were some curb cut issues also, um, but as far as the J-Trans involvement in that right now, um, a lot of those issues um, are pretty much behind us because we have the newer vehicles with 100% working wheelchair lifts. And so we, we're in the process of making some changes to our hand lift operation, which is also known as paratransit by getting some new software, getting some more fixed uh, handy lift vehicles, uh, adding personnel in there to handle calls and reservations. Mm -hmm. No transit system in the country is able to uh, um, run or operate out of its fare box. That's why the governments had to step in and uh, subsidize transit. That's why cities like Jackson are having to fully fund um, transit operations. We would have to charge a fare of probably eighty to hundred and fifty dollars per ride per person if we were to uh, operate um, out of the fare box. Um, so no, without the city uh, funding, we would not uh, be able to operate. The public transit is going to have to change to meet whatever demands is going to be coming into the city. That's that's what we're looking to do. We're hoping to go out to those sub suburban areas. Um, my goal, I would love to see uh, JTRAN become a regional operating system that will go into the Madisons, the Byrams, the Flowoods, uh, Clinton, those different cities and bring people, because you know there's a lot of people that live out in those areas but work here in Jackson and bring them here into Jackson. Transit over the next five, ten years will play a major role in bringing the economy back here to uh, Jackson, Mississippi.